from danger seen and unseen. We thank you, Lord Father, for a reasonable amount of life, health, and strength. We thank you, God, Father, for giving us the, the desire to want to be in the house of God and push forward in the things of God. We ask, Lord, that you bless us on tonight. Give a word, O oh God, that we can hear and live thereby and know, Father, that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's working through us, O oh God. And we, God, we ask, God, that you bless everyone under the sound of our voices. Let your power, let your anointing, O oh God, be upon them. Let your angels and camera around about to them. And let the Holy Ghost have free course in their lives. And for that, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 You see it. Praise the Lord. Praise the amen. Lord. We thank God for his grace tonight. Praise the Lord. And we're going to get right back into where we left off last week. Tonight, we are going to be in chapter 5. We start in chapter 5. And chapter 5, praise the Lord, is actually where the key verse of the book of Galatians comes from. Amen. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bonds. And we have been talking about all this time in the book of Galatians, praise the Lord, how God, amen, through Jesus Christ, has set us free. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. And those who are free, you have to know you're free. Indeed. Amen. Amen. And we know, praise the Lord, that God, amen, set the captive free. Praise the Lord. Jesus came to set the captive free, free from sin, free from the bondages and the penalties and the problems that sin has caused, is causing, and is going to cause in our life. Can we say amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, we know that we are, amen, able to strive Amen. Toward perfection. So here Paul is writing here to the church. Uh, just a quick review of the book of Galatians. The Judaizers wanted the, those new ones coming to the church. Amen. To take on the law of Moses before they could take be free in Christ. And Paul's letting them know that's not the case. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Paul's letting them know that the, that the law, and we talked about this intensely, amen, was a schoolmaster, amen, that led us to Christ. Amen. So we know that we have to look to Jesus. Amen. Who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. All right. So then he declares, amen, that uh, <clears throat> that and this was a problem in the early church. And any time that you have grown up in a particular custom or way, amen, and new people come in, they bring new ideas and new ways with them. Amen. 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 And that is why we have the word of God, amen, to be able to, for us to look to as a guide. Praise the Lord, because, amen, if we were to just translate ourselves right now mm. to another part of the world, let's just pick a place, the Philippines, mm. Nigeria, uh, China, and places where, where, where they are able to worship Christ, Mongolia, Australia, worship may look a lot different than what it looks like for us, amen. Amen. but yet they're serving the same God, amen. amen, and we have to be able to obtain it, that's why uh, one day, my, my desire this year in 2020 was to go on some missions trips, amen, but we weren't able to do that because I think it's always good for us to have experiences in different cultures to understand, praise the Lord, that the God we serve is greater, is greater than what we really think he is. Amen. We, we declare God being big and we declare God being great, but when, he, when we see different groupings of people serving and worshiping God in different ways and different uh, 10,000 miles away. Amen. I think that really kind of hits home how big the God that we serve. Yes, sir. No, I was just going to say, even during the, the convocation, if you turned, if you tuned in at 2 in the morning, you can see them praising God in Africa because mm -hmm. yeah. the service was 24 yeah. hours, so they was all over the world just praising God, and it was so different than the way we praised, but yet you can still, un you, you still knew what was happening, and you still felt the Holy right. Ghost, the presence of God right there. Amen. So, so, so Paul here, and we look at the, the, the courses that Paul took, traveling to all these different churches, all these different regions, all these different ways, amen, and Paul writes these, these epistles to these churches dealing with different things, but yet he can still, he still, amen, con con conveys the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified, amen? amen, and Paul writes to these churches, amen, in different places, and Paul just finally stated the word of God. I become all things to all men that I might win some of them. So the challenge today, amen, is still trying to keep our mind and our hearts open, praise the Lord, amen, to be able to embrace different cultures. Because I believe that after this situation, after whatever this is, whatever comes next after this, because there will be a next. Amen. One thing we have to know is there's, there's always, the God we serve is always pushing us forward. 
Or he was 11 to 1 would not say, now faith is what? The substance, the, the substance of what? Things hoped for. So there's always a next in our life. Amen. Praise God. So faith break, faith pushes us to our next in our life. Amen. 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 So, so, so faith is not stagnant. Faith, praise the Lord, is not complacent. Faith, praise God, is a moving thing, a moving uh, uh, entity that helps move us forward in the things of God. Amen? Amen. So whatever the next is, the Lord is actually, do you not know, preparing us for the next right now. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So whatever that is, we have to pray that God will give us the grace to embrace what the next is. Amen. And that is what he's doing right now. Changing our hearts, changing our minds so we can embrace what is next. Praise God. Because by the time we understand what's going on here, God has already moved on. Mm -hmm. Amen. I heard a preacher say, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, the Bible says that the, when they crossed into the wilderness at the Red Sea, there appeared, when they went, well, when they went into the wilderness, there appeared a cloud, amen, that led them. Amen? Amen. amen? amen. And when the cloud came and stopped, that's where they had to set up camp. But when the cloud rose, that means to pack your stuff up and do what? Follow the cloud. And somebody, one preacher said, I can't take credit for this. He said that uh, the worst place to be is where God used to be. Amen. <laughs> the worst place to be is where God used to be because as long as they stayed under the shadow of the Almighty, under the cloud, because the cloud gave sh shade. Come on, somebody. God is awesome. Think about this. In the midst of the desert for 40 years, they walked under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. The only time they, they needed to go into the sun is if they wanted to go into the sun. Right. They were they had it made in the um, shade. <laughs> in the shade. Oh, you might have to preach that. <laughs> That's preaching more than the That's preaching. <laughs> we had, they had it made in the shade. And then guess what? At night there was a pillar of fire. 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 So there was never no darkness. So during the day, they had made the shade, and at night, because the desert would get hot during the day, so they were in the shade, mm -hmm. and then at night it would get cold, mm -hmm. and, and if you know anything about large fires, mm -hmm. if you have a large enough fire, you can be hundreds of feet away from that fire and still feel the heat off of it. Right. Still feel the heat off of it. You know anything about fires, praise the Lord. Amen. And so God had them right there, protected. And the Lord is trying to help the church understand what's going on right now. That's why we quote Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under what? The shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I will say of my God, he is my refuge, he is my strength, he is my fortress, in him will I trust. But what happened was that if you stayed where God used to be, every, you would get out from under the protection. Right. There was wild animals in the wilderness. There were snakes and serpents in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. There's all kind of perils, robbers, muggers, thieves in the wilderness. But as long as they stayed under the shadow of the Almighty, Come on. they were safe. Amen. Amen. And that's what God is letting the church know. Amen. If you have, if you're in the church, stay in the church. Amen. 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 If you were in the church and you got out the church, the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the last days. The the door of the heart was open to anybody who wanted to get in. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. God did not keep nobody from going in the ark. That's right. Until he shut the door. But when he shut the door, it's closed. the closed. door was shut. Amen. And watch this. If the donkey had enough sense to get in the ark. Come on. I mean, I said, where's my donkey going? <laughs> he getting in the ark. You know what? I might need to go see what, what he was going on down there in the ark. But, but we see the hardness of man's heart. Right. No. And that's what we constantly fight against. It's serving the Lord. Amen? amen? So as you study the word of God, amen, we have to ask God to help take, the prophet said, take out the heart of stone and give you what? A heart of what? Flesh. Flesh. But I just want to expand on that scripture. Lord, take out the stony places of my heart. Because some parts of my heart are tender. Succulent, responsive to God. But there's other parts of my heart that are not. Right. So we have to ask God, if you don't take out my stony heart, take out the stony places in my heart. 
the things that I don't want to surrender to you, that you can touch them and move them. And that's what the word of God is supposed to do. That's what Paul was trying to get the church in Galatia to understand. You brothers got stones in your heart because if you're trying to make people jump through a whole bunch of hoops and do a whole lot of stuff in order to gain Christ, amen, praise the Lord, where is your compassion? Right. Where is your understanding? Where, where, where is your uh, uh, empathy in things of, of what I've done for us? Amen? Of what you've done for us. Amen? Amen? So God is always knocking on the door of our heart, trying to get those stuff. And see what the devil, let's talk about the devil. Now, yeah, I'm going to call his name because, praise God, because what he wants to do is pack up stones in your heart. Right. He wants to, amen, he wants to put things in place. And he wants you to go through experiences and circumstances and situations that will cause portions of your heart to get hard, hardened against God. Amen? Amen. And you have to know, you got to watch out for that guy. Praise the Lord. Amen? Because if he hits the right place, you end up living a particular parts of your life tender to God. Right. And other parts of your life, you're hardened to God. And praise the Lord, God can't move you forward in faith because God said, i got to get rid of the hard stuff because I can't take the hard stuff with me. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, so, so here, the, he's trying to help the church at Galatia understand, if y'all if want to go and see what God has next for you, praise the Lord. That's why Paul says what? Lay aside what? Every, Every weight that's so easy. and the sin and so that's so easy what? Beset, Beset who? Us. Paul's talking about himself. Beset us and run this race for what? Patience. 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 Looking unto who? Looking unto Jesus, who is what? The author and, and the finisher of our faith. So, so those stony places of our heart, we got to ask God to help us with. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 So, so, so that was what Paul is trying to help the church. So when he starts talking about, I'm going to move on. That's the max of where Paul went. But, and so in chapter 5, he says, what? Stand fast, therefore, in the living world, Christ has made you free. So now he's making a declaration that you're free. Be free. If you're free, live free, be free, do free stuff. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 If I'm free, I'm going to act like I'm free. Amen. If I'm saved, I'm going to act like I'm saved. Amen. Praise God. If I'm holy, I'm going to act like I'm holy. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. It defeats the purpose by being a man carnal or an undercover Christian. It defeats, it defeats the purpose. Amen. Not only does it defeat the purpose of the people God wants you to witness to and win just by your life, maybe never open your mouth, but he, he ends up, praise the Lord, not able, amen, to keep all the windows of heaven open in your life that you may he may be able to pour out blessings that you don't have room enough to receive. The Bible says, well, he's not open windows. There's windows in heaven. Amen. This phrase called windows of heaven is used multiple times more than just in Malachi. If you read the Old Testament, this is a phrase, praise God, where, where God has what? Literally what? Opened up everything that, that you need and want. Amen. Amen. But praise the Lord, God, amen, will close those options off to you, amen, when we don't do what God has asked us to do. Amen? amen. And if you ask anybody that do you want God to close, them, close off to you, the answer is probably going to be no. Because you know that God has everything. Amen. I said he got everything. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I don't, and, amen. And even God still blesses us even in the midst of what's going on in our lives. Amen. So, so we, want, we want God to keep the windows of heaven open over our lives. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. I, want the, I, want, I want to live above uh, my brother, praise God. He said, I want to live above an open heaven. He's a pastor there in Indianapolis where I'm from. He said, live, in the, live under an open heaven. I said, what does that mean? When he first told me that, I said, that means that whatever I need, it's available. It's available. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Amen. And he gave us a little insight when he told him, he said, what well, silver shall be what? Loose on earth shall be what? Loosed in heaven. And what silver shall be bound on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. He's letting us know, praise God, we, got, we, have, we have, amen, access to the heavenlies. Amen. Amen. We just have to push through those heavens to get to them because the enemy is the prince and power of what? Yeah. The air trying to hold back what? Our request unto God. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember, remember Brother Daniel? I'm going to get to this. Y'all remember Brother Daniel? Amen. Brother Daniel, praise God, pray, right? How many days did it take for the angels to show up? 21 days, right? 21. But the Bible says God heard him on day what? One. God heard him on day one. So when God said the answer on day one, but because the enemy tries to stop the plan of God. Right. Amen. It took another 20 days for him to get his answer. Praise the Lord. 
So, amen, sidebar. Everybody say sidebar. sidebar. Just because you meet a little resistance doesn't mean God doesn't have that for you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come on. That was, that was free. Keep on. If God has spoken something in your heart, keep pushing. Amen. amen. Can we say amen? amen? And that's what we have to tell ourselves. That's why I think God allowed us, amen, to speak the word on Sunday is that we have to take it how many days at a time? One day at a time. One day at a time. I got to make sure my mind and my heart and my spirit is right when? Today. Today. Amen? Amen? Because that's what counts. Amen. And, and he found out in the morning he wakes us up with what? Love and kindness. Mm -hmm. And sits us to bed with what? With, with his faithfulness. faithfulness. Amen? And that's, that's something to think about. How we have to consider ourselves one day at a time. Praise God. Pressing on the upward way. Mm -hmm. So, amen. Every day you have to get up and and say, you know what? I'm going to do what God has asked me to do today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And even if I get to the end of the day and I was not faithful, praise God, over something. Say tomorrow I'm going to get up and I am going to be faithful. Ask God to cover in your blood and keep on moving. Can we amen. say amen? amen. Ask God. You got, you use the tools God's given you. Amen. Watch this. If I could go down to Experion and what's the other place called? What's the other credit bureaus called? Uh, uh, Experion and um, whatever. Yeah. The three major uh, credit agencies and just tell them that I'm sorry for blowing that $20,000. Can you get that off my credit? Equifax. Actual, yeah, Equifax. I go down, I go, call, go down to Equifax and say, brother Equifax, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I burnt that $20,000 on my girlfriend, my husband, whatever. I burnt it up. Mm -hmm. And it messed up my credit. Wouldn't it be nice to go down and say, I'm sorry? <laughs> and get it back. <laughs> and get it what? Get it back. Off your credit. Off your credit. And your credit rate do what? Woo. Go up. But that's exactly what God has done. God said, if you confess your faults. That's right. He's what? What? If you confess your faults, he's able what? To forgive us and what? And cleanse us mm -hmm. from all unrighteousness. Is that what it says? Amen. So, for, so confession and, and forgiveness are one of the least utilized things in the church anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is what some people need. To get your, get your spiritual credit together. Amen. <laughs> With God. Amen. And all God says come down to my desk and tell me I'm what? Tell me you're what? Sorry. You're sorry. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. I'm helping somebody right now. I'm helping Amen. somebody right now. Because my credit with God is the most should be, should be the most thing I'm concerned about. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? Because if my credit is good with God, amen, guess what? God will do what? He'll open up and give things unto me. Praise the Lord. Amen. I can walk in prosperity, walk in the abundance of God that he wants me to be. So I can be the head and not the tail. Amen. So I can be the lender and not the ball. Amen? Amen. All right. So... Be, be free. Can we say amen? amen? He says, look, and not be what? He says it again. And not get caught up in the thing that God has set you free from. Behold, Paul, I say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall what? That's why I talk about money and credit because he uses the word in verse 2 what? Profit. Called profit. Y'all see that word profit? Mm -hmm. Shall what? Profit you what? Nothing. 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 What is profit? Profit is what you gain after you pay all the bills. Right. Right? You get X number of dollars in, and after you pay all the bills or all your outlay, what you have in additional is your profit. God, Paul lets us know, praise the Lord, you can stay in the law, but the law only had a certain level of blessing. There's only one level of blessing, and guess what? That blessing had a cap on it. That's right. Amen. God only wants to do so much. So, so I say this. There are people who still follow the law. Amen. And they're still blessed. But guess what? They're not walking in the abundance that God wants them to walk in. Right. But because they're honoring the follower of Moses, God will still do things in their life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? And so we get this terminology that we heard growing up in the church, live beneath your means. Anybody heard that before? Amen. You hear that all the time, don't you? Why do you want to live beneath your means? They, they, like to, they like to use that, especially around offering time. But when you understand the concept of God, that giving unto the Lord 
praise God, will allow, amen, what I put in the ground is going to come back up. I understand that. I understand why they use that. But guess what? When I walk in Christ, guess what? I'm, I, I have what? Everything available to me. Amen. Amen. When the law stops, Christ picks up and takes me on a little bit higher. Amen. And then above that, when I talk about the law, the law has no power to get me from this earth to heaven. Amen. Amen. The law has no power to do that. The only thing the law, the far as the law can take me is to the cross. That's what the law can do. Amen. But the story doesn't end at the cross. That's right. Am I right about it? That's right. We thank God for the cross. Amen. But the story doesn't end at the cross. That's right. We thank God of the imagery of the cross and what it represents in, in our lives and our churches and what it means. But guess what? Our life in God does not end the at the cross. Amen. He got up. Our life doesn't even end at the grave. Mm -hmm. Our life begins after the grave. The cross and the grave are processes we got to get through. Amen. 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 The cross is not the destination. And some people say, oh, I got my cross and this. You know, guess what? I understand what you're saying, but guess what? The cross, praise the Lord, is something I got to get through. But that's where the law can only take me to the cross because Jesus died where? Under the law, fulfilling the law at the cross. At the cross. That's right. That's what they said. What is it? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart were what? Rolled away. Rolled away. It was there by faith. I received, I received my sight. I received my sight at the cross. At the cross. My sight for what? Not to stay, but to look forward. That's the songwriter. And now I am happy all the day. All the day at the cross, at the cross. Where I first saw light. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So 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 the law is gonna point us there. Cause the cause the cause the law brings forth what? Death. But Jesus, come that you, but Jesus came that you might have what? Life. 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 So he says here, for I testify against you that every man that is circumcised, he is debtor of what? The whole law. And what does the law do again? It brings the what? Brings the death. Amen. Which is a necessary thing. But guess what? On the other side of death, Jesus got up. Can we say amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Look what he says here. He says here, Be Christ is become of no effect unto you. Why do we want to serve God and God not be effective? Yes. I want to let that settle. Because too many people serve God because mama served God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Too many people serve God because auntie and grandma serve God. But there comes a time in your life where you got to serve God for yourself. Amen. And he is a personal savior. I want my, and being effective does not mean that I'm perfect, but I'm striving for perfection. Amen. 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 Anybody will tell you that, there, that if you want to be an effective listener or an effective communicator, there were times when you were less effective. You did not get the message that you wanted to get across to the individual. Right. Amen. You made it, you messed it up. But you learned from your mistakes, and now you're able to do what? Be able to communicate whatever you're trying to say in a direct me me uh, uh, manner so that the message can be relayed to who you're trying to talk to, an effective communicator. Mm -hmm. One thing effective communicators will let you know is that you can't say the same thing to everybody with the same message across. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all got little people running around your house. You got four, three, two, three, four, five kids in your house. And you know you can't say the same thing to each one of them to, to let them know what you're trying to say. Amen. You got, you, got, you got to be effective because if you yell at one and you, and, you, and you be soft to the other and you do that to the wrong ones, you're going to mess up the whole household. <laughs> some you got to press and some you got to pat. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because you're being what? Effective. You want your message to get across. But you found out how did you learn to be effective? You, there was a time when you might have said the wrong thing at the wrong time. And you found out and said that didn't work. So you changed up and you found out this works or this doesn't work. It's the same way with God. God wants us to understand the Bible says Jesus learned what? Obedience through the things that he suffered. 
what Jesus went to, he learned how to do what he did. So guess what, church? We have to learn how to live this life for God. Amen. And sometimes we're going to get it right, and sometimes we're going to get it wrong. But when we get it wrong, get up, dust yourself off, right. and keep moving in God. Amen. Too many times when people get it wrong, we put our we put our foot on their neck. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. We don't do it with physically, but we talk about it. Amen. We shame them as if we got as if we got no skeleton in the closet. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But we got to. But but God wants our life to be what effective. Amen. And I gotta learn how to be effective in God. I gotta learn how to be an effective leader, God. I gotta learn how to be effective, Amen. So, 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 so Christ can be effective in my life, Amen. I want God to do what He wants to do in my life, so I can get what I what He wants me to have, Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, people say I don't need nothing for God. I don't want nothing for God. But God made us a certain way. It says, "For the eyes of man are what never satisfied." Right? They're God. Who gave us the desire to want stuff? God. God did. He just don't want it. He just don't want you to get it from the wrong place. Right. Or want it more than him. As the deer, what? Panteth after the water brook. Mm -hmm. So my soul, what? Longeth after thee, O oh God. Is that what it says? That's what it says. So God has put the desire in me to want stuff. He just wants me to get it from yeah. him. Amen. Having, there's nothing wrong with having stuff. We just got to get it from yeah. the right place. And want it for the right reason. What does James say? Some of us have some of us pray, but we don't get our prayers answered because we, we pray out of God's will. Right. But God will give. You can pray, amen, in the will of God, and God will begin to bless you, and God will begin to make, amen, praise God, his will, your will. Amen. And if that wasn't a challenge, Jesus never would have said in the garden, Lord, if it be your will, let this come pass. Amen. But Lord, nevertheless, not my will, my will but God's thine will be done. And when Jesus said that, the angel shows up. The angel strengthens him. Praise God. They come and take him. The Peter cuts the man's ear off. He sits the man's ear back on. Come on, somebody. <laughs> he goes from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall here seven times. He gets beat. Amen. He is crucified. And then after three days, he rides with all power. Amen. But the transitional point of that was that he said, What? Lord, nevertheless, not what I want to do, Lord. Right. That's right. But what? You want me to do. And then when he said that, God opened everything else up to him. Can someone receive that tonight? Amen. Amen. You got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. If you want him to be effective in your life. Look, he says, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are falling from what? From grace. I need grace. I ain't, ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a big chunk right there. Praise God. Because was there any grace under the law? Nope. No. No. I remember y'all say eye for an eye. Two for two. two, for two. <laughs> there was no grace under the law. Amen. There was no grace. Grace unmerited favor of God. God has, but now we're walking in the unmerited favor of God, in the grace of God. For we through the Spirit wait for what? The hope of righteousness by what? By faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but what? Faith, Faith which worketh by right. what? Love. By love. Who loved us first? Jesus. God, for God so loved the world. The world. That he what? Gave what? His, His only begotten son. That's what it says, right? Mm -hmm. We, uh, I think Peter picks up later on in the second, third, third book of Peter. We love him because he loved us. Because he first loved us. loved us. So the origins of love does not come from me. Right. I'm not the best lover there is. And neither are you. Amen. I'm gonna have to hurt some lovers. <laughs> I'm breaking down some lovers tonight. You're not the you're not the heavyweight lover. Jesus is. Amen. God's the heavyweight lover. Amen. 
Because from one source, he's passed out love to all men. Amen. Amen. And you can't get past one. Uh, let that go. Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> but because he loved us, and because he showed compassion on us, and because he, the Bible says he placed his love on us, he wants us to have what? Faith in him. When somebody loves you, are you learning to love somebody? You're building faith and trust in that person. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. You just don't get up and just meet somebody and then put all your confidence and trust in them. Right. But Jesus wants us to understand, praise the Lord, for by Jesus neither is these things operating, praise God. He's trying to let them, let them know that it is because God loved you first. Amen. And because God blessed you first. And because God anointed you first. And because God made a way for you first. And because God showed you love, even when you were unlovable, even when you weren't saved, God loved you. Amen. Praise God. When I was polluted in my own blood, Christ died for what? The ungodly. When I wasn't even loved, praise God. Amen. All this thing God is doing, all this thing God is doing for us, doing for us every day, waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, keeping us moving all the day, praise God. And what that's supposed to generate is faith in him. Amen. And that's what he wants us to do. That's what Paul's talking about. He says, but faith which is working by what? By the love of God. Amen. The Bible even said that God will even bless people who are doing wrong so they will repent and turn back to him. Amen. Amen. Please don't try that. Amen. But there's been times where you know you weren't doing right and God still opened that door. Amen. And you think, he said, Lord, I said, that door should never be open. And God, man, that, it does what? It turns your heart. Amen. Mm, like, man, God still love me in spite of. And that's designed not for you to get away. It's designed for you to make a U-turn from the way you're going and turn back to God. Amen. Amen. So God, praise the Lord. That's why on the day of judgment, we're going to be left without an excuse. That's right. And that's not a bad thing. I'm going to tell you why it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing because, praise God, he... We know, praise the Lord, that we are saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. It is what? Nothing but what? The gift of God. And God is passing out salvation still. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And he wants to understand, praise the Lord, that when we stand on the day of judgment, praise the Lord, amen, it's going to be because of him we stand in there. Amen. When he says, if and when, he says, well done, that good and faithful servant. It really has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with God. Amen. See, what happens is, this is what's going to happen when we get to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Is that God is going to give you all the time that he should have destroyed you, but he let you go. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says when we get there, all things shall be what? Okay. Revealed. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you every time you pray God didn't dot your eye and didn't cross your teeth and the blood covered it. Every time you came ashore, every time you went the opposite direction, but yet still he saved you, so you have a reason, amen, to praise him for eternity. Amen. 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 Praise God. You, you'll have a reason to praise God. They won't look. We won't need to have a praise team. Amen. <laughs> we won't have, need to have no musicians. Amen. We won't need none of that because when you, amen, praise God, when, 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 when he says well done and, and opens all the stuff that should have been on your record, but he took off your record and he made you free from the blood of Christ. Amen. Praise God. That's worth a million years right there. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then he gives you a body that can handle it. Amen. Heaven is not going to be a quiet place. It's going to be a place where God is giving, giving glory because of what he's done for us in our lives. Amen. Amen. And the angels are going to look at you like you're strange. Because they're going to say, we used to sing a song, How I Got Over, How I Got Over, My Soul Looks Back in Wonder, How I Got How I Got Over. Somebody don't talk about it. Right? The angel look back and say, ah, man, these folks up here have lost their minds. But it's because God had done a work in your life. I want God to do a work in my life. Amen? Praise God. And so, and so should you want God to do a work in your life. All right. He says, amen. But he says, look, he says, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision. Amen. But what? Faith. He's letting them know. Let that stuff go. Someone say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. If any man be in Christ, then what? 
New creature. New creature, old things are what? Passed away. Passed away, behold, all things are what? Become <clears throat> new. new. Some things, sir, I'm not saying everything needs to be let go, but some things you got to let it go. Amen. In these last few months, I said mid, mid March, if there were certain things we didn't let go of and embrace new things, we wouldn't have a church. Mm. And some churches haven't let them go. Mm. And they ain't got no church no more. Amen. Amen. We had, we had, we had, a, we had, a, we had to let some things go. But guess what? We picked up some what? Some new things. Right. Some things we thought we would never be doing. But guess what we're doing them now? Why? Because that's where God is pushing us. Amen. Amen. So Paul is letting them know, amen, it's all about faith and God through the love of God that God has on our lives. That's what he says. He says, ye did run well. But look, and so Paul, again, is tying us. Look, he, he's referring, he's, he's a repetitive, multidimensional, multifaceted speaker trying to convey an idea of Different ways and multiple times so that you can catch the idea of what he's trying to say. He says it again. You did run well, but who did hinder you? You used to do well, church. But who? Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now, the word truth, praise God, is an explosive word. It's a word full of dynamite. And the reason why I say the word truth is full of dynamite is because, praise the Lord, when, when people get hear the truth, sometimes they don't want to receive it. Amen. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth has creative abilities in it. Amen. And the truth shall make you free. Is that what it says? The truth has the ability to create newness in your life. Lies don't do that. Amen. Lies, praise God, continue the status quo. But that's why God hates liars. Amen. But he loves the what? The truth. He says, buy the truth and what? Sell it not. Because the same thing that makes up God is what truth is made out of. Amen. Amen. So when we don't tell the truth, we don't tell God. Amen. And watch this. Are you ready? When you are a liar, you are actually anti-God. Amen. Revelations. Come on, Pastor. You're anti-God. Yes, and if you're anti-God, you're anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that that spirit is already alive and well in this earth. Right here. That's right. Can we say amen? Amen. So that's why when we don't tell the truth, but then he tells us how to tell the truth. He says, speak the truth, what? In love. In love. He don't hit him upside the head with the truth. You get to let them know that you're telling the truth for the right reason. But you let them know, why did you not follow what the plan was? You saw what God did. You saw how God was moving. And then all of a sudden, you want to add something to it, and then God stopped moving. Amen? Amen. And, that, and he says, uh, this persuasion coming not from him that calls you. Praise God. Not from him that calls you, praise God. God has already done this. He says, hey, look what he says. Amen. He's trying to persuade them, amen, when he didn't call them. Who called them? God called them. When someone comes through your doors, into your local assembly, or comes into your household, amen, and you have a Bible class, praise God. Amen. Though you may have picked up the phone and texted them, or though you may have praised the Lord, amen, reached out, emailed, and emailed them, it was not you calling them. It was God using you amen. to call them. Mm. And this is what Paul's in the church here. Paul's letting them know, I'm not the one that had called you. The great God of glory just used me to call you. Amen. amen. That's why no matter what your ministry is, praise the Lord, if you're picking up trash in the church or you're preaching in the pulpit, amen, to the fire of God comes down, guess what? You ain't doing it. Amen. God doing it amen. through you. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Because too many people get stuck, praise God, amen, about what God does through them as if they've done something. Amen. You ain't done nothing. Amen. You a pile of dust. Come on. Dirt. That God animated. 
and put his spirit in as a vessel. Amen. That's all you, that's all we are. Because cause when we die, guess what's going to happen? We're going right back to the dirt. As a matter of fact, if you get up and wash every morning, you find out that you turn the dirt every day still. Amen. You, well, you can get up in, on Sunday, on Monday morning, sit around the house all day long mm -hmm. and drink soda pop. Mm -hmm. And get in the shower at night and dirt come off in the shower. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why is that? Because that's what I'm made of. God does it all, church. He called us. He says, no, now Paul jumps to change up. He says, what? A little leaven does what? Leaven what? A little leaven leaven the whole lump. He's letting them know, praise God, when you bring in a little something, guess what? It's going to mess everything up. We got the, the Bible says, if you're holy, be holy still. That's right. Amen? Praise God. We have to know church. We have to strive to do our best to maintain a standard of righteousness and holiness in our midst. Can we say amen? Amen. If you are a leader of the home, you hold the standard of righteousness in that home. Amen. If you are a leader in your local church, you hold the standard of what righteousness is. What is righteousness? Continuing to teach and preach the word of God. Amen. The Bible says in the last day, there shall be a famine. And the famine shall be for what? The word of God. How are you able to live and preach and teach and pastor and, and do all this stuff? Because I, because I found out that it's the word of God that brings life. Amen. Amen. I don't have one ounce of life to give you. I don't even have the Holy Ghost to give you. Mm -hmm. But I have the word. Amen. And the word works. Amen. And we have to continue to give people what? The word, the word of God. Amen. You got to walk circumspect to the word. And, and this is what gets me in this day and age. Well, Pastor, I don't know what the Bible says. Now, look, you got the Bible on the cell phone. Come on. You get the Bible on the, the, the you, get, you get your daily scripture on the Facebooks. Come on. You get the, you get the bird tweeting it to you. You got the young person Snapchatting it. You got uh, somebody YouTubing it by song. Amen. And then you got that old dusty print version in the back window of, 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 the, of the sedan. Come on. And you like, you don't know what God's saying. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. God is talking, but are we listening? Come on, man. Amen. Amen. Some of us. They talk about men. I can talk about men, right? Amen. They say we got selective hearing, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. We hear what we want to hear, right? Amen. But guess what? I'm going to share with you that mankind has selective hearing. Amen. Because God is talking. Mm -hmm. But are we listening Amen. what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. We have to ask God. That's why he says, very, really, very, really, I say it to you. He that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What is God saying in this season? I'm going to tell you what I believe God is saying in this season. I said it at the service for the sister on that Saturday. Mm -hmm. I said it on Sunday. God is saying, get your house in order. Amen. I came across Hezekiah just on yesterday in my reading, and the prophet came to Hezekiah and said, get your house in order. in order. God is, this is a shot across the bow, if you speak, of getting your house in order. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got to get your house in order. That means that you need to be, if you're saved, stay saved. If you're not saved, get saved. If you're halfway saved, get all the way saved. Amen. If you're almost saved, get all the way saved. Amen. If you think you're not saved, make it up a surety. Church, that's the only hope we got today. Because every system that we know is being attacked. Amen. Every system we know is being attacked. But the word of God, stand it sure. Amen. Amen. So God is saying, 
And even the, watch this, even the institution of churchism and church dome is being attacked. Amen. But the word of God stands strong. Stands strong. Amen. The Holy Ghost is alive and well. Amen. Can we say amen? Praise God. Because we got to do what the song where it says. We got to build our hope on things eternal. Hold, the Lord, hold to God's unchanging hand. Is that what he said? Then he said, hold to his hand. God's unchanging. So, so as you look across what's going on in our society, amen, and in our world, praise God, God is trying to speak to us and let us know, get our houses in order. Still, praise the Lord, and he's trying to do it with all diligence, trying to go, you know, God goes way far farther than we go when dealing with people. Amen. When we're ready to do what with them? Cut them off. God said, I'm just getting started. Amen. And that's where he has mankind. Praise the Lord. Even when God, and we can see this. In Noah's time, he said, even when, even when he looked and repented to make man, praise God, the Bible says God's heart was turned by Noah. Though man was wicked continually, the Bible said that Noah found what? Grace. In the eyes of the Lord. Noah, man done lost his mind. But Noah built an ark. Y'all see what I'm saying? Though we have left God as a society, though we have went after this and that and this and that, God raises up these situations to let us know, get your house in the word. Amen. Amen. And that is not an indictment against you. It is a plea, amen, and a call and a reach out of help. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about the Bible says warning always comes before, before destruction. Is that what it says? Yes. Son, Friday is trash day. Come on. It's Monday. Have you taken this trash out? No, Dad, I haven't taken it. Tuesday, Wednesday. Have you taken this trash out? No, I got, in your mind, I got, what, two more days, right? Right. <laughs> or clean your room. Thursday. Son, Thursday night. Because Friday is trash day. Right. And the trash may, man may come. If my trash may come, if my trash may come. He may come at 6 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Or he may come 6 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Somewhere between those 12 hours, he's coming. To get that track. Amen. It's Thursday night. I'm going to close on this. Son, have you taken out the track? It's Thursday night. Oh, I know he comes. I know the track I've been before six. Is that right? Right? Right. You lay down at 9 o'clock. I'm going to get up at 5 30 to the trash out. When you wake up, trash. it's 6 30. And the trash man decided that there was a substitute driver today. Amen. And instead of him coming at three in the afternoon, he shows up at six oh five. Come on, son. Have you taken the trash out? Uh, <laughs> no. Did I not tell you to take the trash out? You understand know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He waited till what? Man. The last minute. Watch this. Knew when the trash man was Come. supposed to be there, mm -hmm. but because of the cares of life, sleeping is the care of life. He missed the trash man. Amen. Church of the Living God. It is five fifty-nine a.m. Mm -hmm. and fifty-nine seconds. That's what time it is. Okay. And God's getting ready to show up. Amen. And yet still, the Father is saying, 
Wake up, son. Wake up. It's 5.59. You know the trash man's going to be here at 6 o'clock. God is saying that, church, it is 5.59 and 59 seconds, and yet the Father is doing what to, to the people, God? Shake He's trying to do what? Come on, wake up, because I'm getting ready to come back. That's what time it is. Amen? So you have to cut through all the stuff that we see going on and see that. Because the, cause everything's already set up for when the saints are taken out of here. Amen. Amen. All this internet stuff, these last, what is that, March, April, maybe the last four months, has actually formed us into one world. Do y'all know that? Amen. We're in one world. There's only two or three, four major suppliers of almost anything. And they're going to consolidate that. And somebody's going to be in charge of that. Come on, somebody. You got to see what's going on. Amen. Get your house, what? In order. In order. And though, and though 6 o'clock may not come next week, it may come next year, it may even come next next decade, but God's still saying, do what? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Get your house in order. That's what he's talking about today. And here at the Galatian church, she's trying to let the church know, I didn't call you, God called you. A little leaven does what? Messes up everything. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye be none likewise minded, but he that troubles you shall bear his judgment, and whosoever he shall be. Here, Whose fault will it be if you miss the rapture? Mm. It'll be whose fault? Your, mm. your fault. Mm. Don't, don't be pointing your finger at God. God, I didn't know. God, I told you I got the word everywhere. God, I didn't know. God has been talking. Mm -hmm. But are we listening? And yet he's trying to tell the Galatians church the same thing. Look, you got to look beyond what's happening. He's trying to let the Galatians church know that what you're doing is only carnal stuff, natural stuff. Right. I'm dealing with what? Spiritual stuff. So get your mind out of the carnal gutter and start opening your eyes spiritually to see what's going on. And see, praise the Lord, church, that God is soon to come, Lord. Amen? Amen. The church, again, and this is, this is a serious topic because we don't, sometimes we don't know what we have till it's gone. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and guess what? We ain't got no chances. We have no way of recovery if we miss this. We need to be sticking here, stay in the church, stay where, where the fire's hot. You stay, amen, close to the church. You stay close to the things of God. You stay close to the power of God. You walk humbly before your God. Amen. Pray to God. You love one another. You serve one another. Amen. You do what God says do. Amen. You walk in the footsteps of Christ. Amen. And you're going to be all right. Amen. Can we say amen? amen? Turn yourself off and turn up God in your life. Amen. 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 I'm done. Somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I hope something said to encourage you tonight because, amen, what would it be if you go take the test and the teacher don't tell you the answers? <laughs> God is going to, we got a test to pass called the rapture, but God has given us the answers. Amen. We just have to walk in them. Amen? So walk in your power, walk in your deliverance, walk in your freedom in God because he has what he needs for what we have need for what, what he has what we have need of him he has for us amen, amen. i'm gonna pray father we thank you for your grace and mercy thank you for your goodness lord we ask the lord to follow the word that went forth on tonight lord that you touch the hearts of the people god that you touch oh god those who may not know you in salvation lord we ask god that you turn the hearts of the people back towards you help us oh lord to understand that we got to make sure our houses are in order lord Oh, God, we know, God, we got to occupy till you come. But, Lord, help us to keep our eye on the prize. Lord, help us to stay, know that we got a maid in the shade under your shadow of your almighty God. We ask that you bless everyone who's with us tonight. Oh, God, we ask that you strengthen them. Oh, God, bless them where they're weak, encourage them where they're downtrodden, uplift, oh, God, where they're broken down. Yes. For you are the repair of the breach. Oh, God, Father, repair breaches in hearts, repair breaches in marriages, repair breaches in families, repair breaches, oh, God, financially and, and naturally and emotionally and spiritually, oh, God. Hallelujah, God, we just declare and decree that you are a way maker, oh, God, a problem solver and a healer tonight, God. Let your healing virtue flow 
from the sanctuary to every heart tonight, and we give you praise, and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. If you want to support Praise Temple by financially, you can go to our website and thank God for you again. Praise God for each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.